Hello, and we have some interesting news for you. First up, Ripple has replaced all the ODL US-based operations from XRP to USDT. That's right. You can use another bridge currency besides XRP with ODL. And for US-based operations, they've ditched XRP and used USDT. Why is that? Is this a betrayal or something else? It's actually something else because it's due to a court order that all institutionally sold um, XRP could indeed be securities. So they're switching to USDT. Now for their foreign contracts, they're still using XRP, but for any US-based ODL business uh, that has to do with USD, they are using um, USDT. Now that kind of signals that USDT isn't a security, which would blow apart like any SEC case against stable coins, which is a good thing. And this comes from Ripple's own filing. In yesterday's court filing opposing the US Securities and Exchange Commission's motion for remedies and final judgment, Ripple disclosed significant changes to its on-demand liquidity operations in the United States. The filing clarified that its US-based ODL services have shifted from using XRP to Tether USDT as a bridge currency. This strategic pivot was a response to the summary judgment in the SEC lawsuit, which found that institutional sales fell under U.S. securities laws. Since the ruling, non-U.S. entities have been the sole count contracting parties for XRP sales uh, to ODL customers. So basically, they don't sell XRP to their ODL customers in the United States anymore. They sell USDT, which proves two things. You can't actually use USDT for it. And like I said, I think this does play a part into why Ripple made their own stablecoin because they want to use their own stablecoin instead of USDT. The filing highlights the company's remaining ODL business in the United States uses a non-XRP, hence USDT, bridge currency. This is not a betrayal by Ripple, the company. This is something they had to do because of legal considerations. Monica Long, president of Ripple, elaborated in an internal email details which were shared by uh, Crypto Erie on social media platform X. Long stated, immediately following the order, we took steps to migrate US-based ODL customers from using XRP as the bridge currency to ODL into using USDT or the contract was terminated. We should continue to use USDT for US-based flows until otherwise approved by legal. My guess is they're not going to get approved by legal anytime soon. So US-based ODL will use USDT. Obviously, this puts a uh, shock in the use case by XRP, but all is not lost. Ripple's uh, Singapore subsidiaries have been the primary contracting entity for a commitment to sell XRP contracts to new ODL customers. We are predominantly foreign, uh, who are predominantly foreign, and since the order, non-US entities have exclusively been con the contracting parties for XRP sell contracts to ODL customers. The restructuring within Ripple's business model underscores a significant geographical and operational pivot. Most of the ODL customers are located in the uh, Asia-Pacific region because they're smaller countries, so they wouldn't be affected by this. But any U.S. ODL sales will not be using XRP anymore. They are re being replaced by USDT. So their expansion for XRP on ODL is primarily going to be overseas. Um, and their U.S. Uh, entities are definitely not going to be using XRP. They're going to be using a stablecoin. Backo calculated Ripple's monetary operating costs and income taxes paid, which total uh, deducting those expenses from Ripple's pre-compliant revenue from institutional sales in that period, which totals re uh, and further re deduct income, uh, income taxes. Ripple had a loss of, so basically like, they redacted the numbers, but it looks like um, in terms of net profit, Ripple did actually have a loss. Of course, they may have made that loss up by selling more XRP, but that has yet to be seen. So that's the news for XRP. They are using USDT for their operations in the United States on ODL, not using XRP anymore. And it's definitely like a legal reason. I, think, I believe they would use XRP if it wasn't for the legal reason. Now, WorldCoin is going to sell up to 195 million in WLT tokens uh, soon, that results in a possible 19% increase in terms of supply. Obviously, crypto price is always a tug between supply and demand, and a 19% increase in supply, although not devastating, may have some kind of effect. Obviously, WorldCoin is trying to expand. WorldCoin, a crypto-based digital identity project, 
recently revealed, they're the eyeball scanning guys, by the way, so you don't know, recently revealed expansion plans by selling WLD tokens. It intends to release between 0.5 million and 1.5 million tokens each week for up to six months. Uh, the sale might introduce 36 million WLD tokens in circulating supply. Uh, consequently, this would represent an 18.6% increase in the, existing, in the existing supply of 193 million tokens. Um, but the thing is, like, generally, like, an 18.6% increase isn't that big. For instance, Hedera is going to go from, I think, 35 billion to about 43 billion uh, at the end of the year. And that's roughly about the same. I think it's like a 20% increase or something. Uh, but, you know, it's this is going to happen within like two or three months, I think. So it could actually get the price to fluctuate in a matter that's not good for token investors. But we will have to see. The initiative aims to cater primarily to institutional trading firms outside the U.S., adhering to specific legal restrictions to prevent these tokens from entering U.S. market again. The plan sale incorporates several safeguards, such as a potential 40-day lockup period to prevent immediate resale of tokens, especially to U.S. persons or on platforms accessible within the U.S. So I, I think this is like a foreign sale. But for WLD investors, um, which actually include myself, because I do have some WLD tokens on like some kind of Cardano drop or whatever. No, that's WMT. I don't have any. Never mind. Uh, for holders of WLT tokens, this might not be a good thing because increased supply generally leads to price going down. So if you're looking at your world um, mobile, uh, world tokens going down don't actually be surprised because they are diluting supply however it's not a huge dilution so it shouldn't cause the supply to go down by that much but either way just uh to be sure that you know what's actually happening the additions of millions of new tokens could potentially deprive the price further especially since wld is currently struggling to maintain a support level of five dollars and 33 cents at 37 cents, a breakdown below this threshold could trigger additional losses. But like I said, it's going to come over a couple of months, so it's not going to be immediate uh, in terms of the effect. So that's the um, news with World uh, WLD tokens. Solana has actually acquired, I mean, Sol Solana's Jupiter has acquired Ultimate Wallet for mobile expansion. Now, it's good for um, Jupiter to do this, and I think Jupiter has a lot of potential to grow on Solana. So they want a specific wallet specifically to cater to their needs. Uh, if you don't know, Phantom Wallet pretty much uses Jupiter um, by default to swap, and it's a good idea. I think like most Solana wallets or Solana supported wallets are going to use Jupiter to swap for Solana. But having a wallet for yourself that a lot of people use uh, definitely is a good idea. An announcement shared on X, Jupiter discloses plans for a mobile initiative to onboard millions of users with a beta launch scheduled for May. Both platforms seek to deliver high-speed on-chain trading experiences on Solana. So Jupiter actually bought this out on Twitter. Uh, they have like one-click trading, all this stuff. Um, our main focus is simplified user experience. Similar to automatic car with auto config, we reduce complexity such as gas, slippage, or retrying your transactions. Focused on Solana and swapping means we can provide the best experience possible. Jupiter Mobile one-click trading. We want you to build the best products. You need the best starting point. That's why we're thrilled to say we've acquired Ultimate App. They're one of the best DeFi mobile apps and we're building uh, we're going to leverage their technology and team to turbocharge Jupiter Mobile. That's very, very cool. Um, and I think this will be a very useful app for many people. Obviously, Solana is going to grow a lot. And with that, Jupiter is going to grow a lot. And with Jupiter growing, they need an app to themselves. One that already comes out of the box, that's already functional, that they can develop on to please their customers. Ultimate Wallet users were informed that the current app would be sunsetted May 22nd, 2024. Until then... Uh, users can continue using the wallet as usual. The company assured users their funds would be secured during the transition period. Starting May 23rd, 2024, users can only receive their recovery phase uh, while maintaining access to their cloud setups. Despite the anticipated changes, the team behind Ultimate is committed to ensuring a smooth transition for users. To assist with the transition, a tutorial has been prepared. So there is a tutorial um, at basically ultimate.app, blog Ultimate Jupiter thing, uh, to guide users uh, through exporting their wallets. Jupiter is launching its new mobile initiative with new mobile application that will allow users to trade any token without charging fees. So generally pretty cool stuff. Um, and this is obviously good for Jupiter. They needed to do something like this. They want to become like probably the biggest swap on Solana and uh, the biggest uh, medium of exchange on Solana and maybe go multi-chain. They also have like staking pools, derivatives and all that stuff. So a big like kind of like thing like that 
does need something like this and I'm glad they've actually acquired it. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.